Phil, four weeks into your time here at Bristol City, how are you finding life at the club? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's been great. Um, everyone's made me feel extremely welcome. Uh, and I've sort of uh, felt part of the club almost immediately. It's been super. I can't believe it's four weeks. It actually feels a bit longer. It was um, you know, a, a baptism, baptism of fire, if you like, uh, coming in right at the end of the transfer window. But it was, it's been great. I've enjoyed it. Although February 1st was your official start date, you, you were busy before then taking over from Richard Gould in the final week of the window. Um, how would you assess the business that we did? Yes, um, I actually joined on January the 23rd, so it was the last week of the transfer window. Um, and um, I'd already been talking to Richard a little bit prior to that as well. So Richard was doing was um, concluding the Bournemouth deal for Antoine, which was made a lot of sense. And I kind of picked up the pieces thereafter. So we, we did some trading, it was good. We brought a couple of uh, young players in. Um, we got a couple of loan players out and uh, we settled a couple of contracts as well. So it was, it was quite a busy period. And I had to, you know, whilst I've done some of that before to do it at a new club, it was, um, it was a bit of a baptism of fire. But I think in terms of the overall, if you look back at the window, I think it was a, it was a good trading period for us. Obviously, we missed out on one or two targets, which would have been really the icing on the cake, but very pleased with that as well. I mean, um, it, it, went, um, it went probably as well as it could be. And you spent a lot of time in, in football. What is it that really attracted you to come to Bristol City? Yeah, I've, uh, I was at Crystal Palace 26 years, a long time at one club, although it felt like sort of different clubs over a period of different ownership groups at the time. But um, I had a great time at Crystal Palace, enjoyed it, some fantastic people. Um, but the time was right for me to step down from my role last May. And since then, I've been doing a, a bit more for Palace on a consultancy and a bit with Wick and Wanderers, which I've enjoyed. And the opportunity came up at City. And um, it sounded it sounded a great opportunity, and I just I, I followed up followed up the um, the conversations with some visits here, and, and met the met with both with Gavin initially, Richard Scudamore, who's very much involved here as well, and bought very quickly into the dream or the ambitions of Steve, Maggie, and John Lansdowne in trying to make this into a you know Bristol into a sporting hub, and you can see the investment that's gone in. Uh, it's really very impressive and, and, and for me it found like a really good challenge, not too far away from where I live, but it, it, it was something that I thought I bought into very, very quickly and, um, and here I am. That vision and, and investment, you've previously spoken about it being Premier League ready, what can you kind of, can you elaborate on that readiness? Well, yeah, I mean, yes, it's very pretty straightforward. I mean, you look at the stadium, the investment that's gone into the stadium, it's, it, it, it's, a, it's a superb facility there and of course the training ground which we're in here now is is Premier League Premier League ready. Um, facilities for the player, for the players, they've got everything they need in terms of medical assistance, support, nutrition, the practicing facilities, everything's superb um, and you know it, it's as good as any Premier League club. Um, we just need to obviously get get up up the table and into those Premier League positions or those playoff positions um, and get ourselves up there. So that's the ambition. And performances on the pitch have been really good of late, 11 unbeaten now after the weekend. How encouraged are you that on and off the pitch the club is moving in the right direction? Yeah, well it sort of dovetails in with the conversation around the, um, the transfer deadline really. We looked at the makeup of the squad, we knew, quickly, quickly assessed what needed to be done. So we brought in younger, hungrier players, um, some players have left who've probably been here a bit of a while and, and uh, we felt it was a good time for them to move on as well. Uh, but I think in terms of the, the structure of the squad, the, the, the age of the squad, the depth in all the various positions, and indeed the younger players coming through in the academy, it's really encouraging. And to see it actually taking shape on, on the park um, is, is great to see every, every Saturday afternoon. I'm enjoying watching the team. I'm enjoying the, 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 um, the energy that's out there. Um, obviously, with the, the um, full credit to Nigel, Kurtz and, Jay, and Jason in terms of the, the, um, the first team uh, squ um, coaching team doing a super job um, and long may it continue. And I think I think looking at that and even now we're looking at plans for the summer, what we're, what we're going to be doing in the summer. Um, and it's exciting. It's an exciting place to be and it's an exciting time to be a Bristol City fan. And over the last few years, the club have been working hard to become more financially sustainable. Um, how important is it that we continue to do that and how, how do we do it? 
Yeah, well, it, I mean, we have to live within the uh, the financial rules of the football league, and that's and that's um, the the rules that that governs all the clubs within the league, and we're very conscious of that. But but equally, you know, we've got to be um, very much aware that it's Steve Lansdowne is is finance, financing the club, and we've got to be respectful of that as well. So really, want to make every every pound a prisoner. So looking at all our costs, looking at co our cost base, and see where we can cut and be more economical without really damaging the impacts on the team and the performance. So I think that's just good sound business sense that any the any owner owner want us to do. But at the same time, we're also looking at. Um, looking at how we can increase revenues as well. There's two, two ways to balance those books. So cutting the cost, increasing the revenues. But as I said on many times to the kind of management team here, don't mistake um, reducing costs as reducing ambition. That is definitely not the case. You know, the ambition is very much still there. We still want to be up into the top flight. We still want to be part of the Premier League. But we do need to be very, very um, aware of what money we're spending in the building, what the overall costs of running the operation are and if we can cut those and we can be prudent with how we purchase and how we how we do things um, I think that's only just sound solid business sense. And one of the big success stories that we've had obviously in recent years is the club's academy this year we've had an average of six players in the matchday squad that have come through the pipeline how important is it like you said previously to, to balance the academy products that we've got within the squad but also new recruits that are coming in the windows? It's essential. I mean, you can see the investment that's gone into the academy, and you can see the the hard work that that Brian and his team have put in over many years. And from a fan's point of view, you know they they like nothing more than their own coming through and playing in the first team. And every now and again, we might have to move one or two of those on. You know, if they if they if if they they get a chance to move up and go up into different bigger clubs for a fee, obviously. But you know, we we embrace that, and and you know, it's a sign of how well the academy's doing. And there's some great kids coming through in for, uh, at different age groups already and some of those potentially knocking on the door even for next year's first team squad so there's lots to like within that and obviously it's it's a little bit you know to, to bring players through it's a little bit cheaper in terms of the cost of producing those players in terms of balancing that with going out in the market which is pretty pretty severe at the moment in terms of what you know when you, how much money you need to spend to bring players that are first team ready into the building and you've got and then you've got to balance that with those young players coming through but there's some super kids coming through and it's really a quite exciting and and the combination of what we've got the kids that are coming through and maybe one or two targets we're looking to bring in the building i think it's really exciting times you talked about that excitement among the fan base it's almost evident to see where there's more than uh, 14,000 season ticket holders this year and attendance on average are up a thousand compared to last year. How encouraged are you by that support here in the West Country? Really encouraged, yeah. I've seen, I've seen, I've only seen a handful of games at home, um, but I'm, I'm used to coming here as a, you know, as a, as a visit in the visiting team, and it was always a difficult place to come at Ashton Gate to get a result. And that's because it's it's so fervent, it's so exciting. The noise is is great, and you know you can feel that you feel the emotion building even in the short time I've been here in terms of the, the when the results are coming and the potential there is for for future growth as well. So fourteen thousand is great. But we want to move on. We're already talking about what the season ticket plan for next season is going to be because we, we we need more season ticket holders on board. We need more fans on board. We need to be selling out Ashton Gate every week. And with the potential of Premier League football, you know that's achievable. And you can see you can see that the fan base is there. You can see it's it's a good representation of of the southwest, if you like. Uh, very exciting place, and I look forward to sort of see those numbers, which are already good, getting better. You talk about selling out Ashton Gate just over a week's time. We welcome Manchester City here in the fifth round of the Emirates FA Cup. Um, what will that fixture do for this club and, and potentially this city? It's great, isn't it? I mean, the, ga the game's been shown live on ITV. Um, like, so domestically, it'll be shown live. Obviously, it's available all around the world. So the viewing figures, watching, watching the club, uh, many potentially for the first time to give uh, people an idea of what, what Bristol City is all about. It's, it's a, a window to our world for the rest, all those fans all over the globe. Hopefully, we pick up some interest globally as well. But it's great showcase for the club. It will, it can, it will show um, the footballing world where, where Bristol City are. Uh, and I'm sure we'll put, uh, put on a good show against one of the, you know, one of the best teams in the world.